Hi everybody, welcome back to day two of virtual art camp. So this week we are taking a look at five different artists who have had an impact on art history. And like I said yesterday, today we're gonna be exploring the art of Vincent Van Gogh. So just like always, we're gonna take a look at the materials we're gonna need for today. And we're gonna have a little history lesson we're going to learn a little bit about Vincent van Gogh and take a look at some examples of his paintings. Here are the materials you're going to need for today. A white piece of paper, a pencil, a sharpie, your paint brushes, some water, and your watercolors. Vincent van Gogh was a Dutch Impressionist painter. He is among one of the most famous and influential artists in history. Impressionist painting is a style of painting that focuses on the effects of light on colors and forms. Impressionist artists often use broken brushstrokes instead of smooth and unnoticeable ones. They also use many colors to paint scenes of everyday life. Vincent van Gogh created around 2,100 paintings in his lifetime. Even though he created so many paintings, he barely sold any. Some of his most famous works include paintings of sunflowers and beautiful landscapes. All right, now that you've had a chance to look at some of his paintings, we are going to be inspired by his beautiful sunflower paintings, and we are going to be painting our own fabulous sunflower. So get your materials ready and let's get started. Okay, let's start with a pencil first and we're going to sketch out our sunflower. So unfortunately, I don't have a sunflower to look at. So we're, I'm going to kind of draw it from memory. If you have a sunflower around your house or even another type of flower, you could always use that to look at and observe. So we're going to start by drawing a nice big circle somewhere on your page. I'm going to draw mine in the center. Yours doesn't have to be in the center. And then I'm gonna start with my petals. So I'm just gonna make some beautiful petal shapes all the way around. Just like this. You can have them go off the page if you want them to. You could have them be really big I'm doing these projects with you, but you have the freedom to take what you've learned here and make it into your very own design. Okay. One more petal here. And what I'm gonna do is sunflowers have those big faces and if you look really closely at them, you can see lots of texture. So I am going to add just kind of little circles around here. So that way when we go in to paint, it'll have a little bit more detail. And we'll be able to use these maybe as little color compartments as I like to call them. All right, let's do a little stem over here and some leaves. So the focus today is really exploring watercolor painting techniques by layering colors and brush strokes just the way Vincent van Gogh did in his paintings. So we're going to keep this simple and do a more complicated painting technique. So grab your Sharpie and let's just quickly go over our pencil lines. So Vincent van Gogh is probably one of my favorite artists. I love looking at his paintings because there's so much to look at. 
there's so many colors and the way he combines colors and layers on top is just incredible. And if you ever get to see a Vincent van Gogh in real life at a museum, I bet you could spend hours and hours looking at it. All right. So while you're doing this, start thinking about how you are going to use your brush strokes to apply color because you're going to be layering blues and maybe some greens to create different shades of blue. You can be combining yellows and oranges to make different shades. You could even add a little bit of purple in there. Greens, you could do yellow mixed in with your green to make different colors. The possibilities are really endless here and we are going to start exploring that right now. So you can put your Sharpie off to the side, grab your watercolors, grab your paintbrush. Now, we're going to do the background with shades of blue and of course our sunflower with beautiful shades of yellow. So, I'm gonna start with my petals. So I'm gonna start with some yellow. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just making little lines of color like this. And I'm gonna do that in each of my petals. And you can leave a little bit of white because you can always go back in with either the same color or a different color because remember we're going to be layering. And you remember the watercolor basics, right? More water, color is going to be lighter. Less water, your color is going to be a little bit darker. So keep that in mind as we are exploring colors. So I think what we'll do is we'll do the flower together so that you get a sense of how Vincent van Gogh may have layered some colors. He didn't do a lot of watercolor painting, but that's okay, we can still get some great effects with this. And while you're doing it, think about how hard Vincent van Gogh worked to get all those layers of colors. Those paintings must have taken a long, long time. All right, now I'm gonna use a little bit of orange. I'm gonna to start to go in and layer that color kind of on top of my yellow. And usually I tell you, oh, your brush strokes should be going all in the same direction. But this time, I'm gonna give you a little freedom. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling some of this lighter color up into the darker color I'm putting on. Now see how this one blended a lot, but these ones you can really tell that they're different colors. Do little, little dabs of color all around it. Really take the time and kind of experiment with your paintbrush. What can your paintbrush do for you? If you dab it like this, do you like that better than maybe making clean brush strokes? Play around with it, see? what you can do. <laughs> All right. Now you could make a darker shade of orange if you wanted to by adding some red. And you can mix colors right on the paper or you could do it on the 
plastic part of your watercolor tray. You could even add, we'll add a touch of red here in a little bit just to see what happens. So little dabs of color all around. And the more color, the more colors you use and the more overlapping you do, the more interesting effects you're going to get. You're going to get some really beautiful color and possibly even some really beautiful texture. And one thing you could do is you could do one painting with watercolor and then you could use some acrylic paint and see if you get some different if you like that paint layering better. So let's just do a very little bit of red and see what happens. So we're just doing little dabs of it all around. And it's gonna kind of sink in to the other colors that you have. You don't have to do it on every single one. You could really blend it if you wanted to. If you don't like it, you could maybe layer it on top with some other, with the, your orange or your yellow. All right, so I like how my petals look. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some brown and I'm just gonna start to paint the center of my sunflower brown. If you want it darker, remember, less water. Okay. One of the fun thing with some of these projects is that you could do a series of work. So if you loved painting this sunflower, you could do one in watercolor. Maybe you want to do another with oil pastel. Maybe you want to do another one with acrylic paints. The possibilities are endless. You have all of these supplies now and you can just explore. All right. I'm gonna take a little bit of black paint and I'm just gonna drop it in each of these little circles that I've created and they are gonna expand a little bit. So you don't wanna use a lot. Because the background's wet and the paint's wet, it's going to create these really beautiful designs. Okay, now let's work on our stem and our leaves. So a little bit of green paint here. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of my yellow paint first and paint my leaves. And then take some green and put it in there and see how I've got kind of a lighter yellowy green on one side that moves into a darker green. All right, so to make this flower pop, we're going to use blues and purples for the background. So my suggestion is that there are some spots on my paper at least that have kind of puddles of water and that are still wet. 
So what I would do is I would take a little bit of time now, let it dry, maybe get a little snack if you want, and then come back to it and work on the background. So I'm actually just gonna hop into it so that while you're snacking, you can watch so that you know what to do when it's your time to paint. So I'm gonna use a smaller paintbrush and I'm just gonna very carefully get in these little spots over here. And then once I've done that, I'm just gonna start layering colors and playing around with my paints. And with your paintbrushes, you may wanna just use the edge. I think yours are a little bit larger than mine, so just use kind of the edge of the paintbrush so you get, still can use, have a little dainty brush. Okay, I'm gonna grab my bigger brush again, and I'm gonna start pulling some of these colors out into the background. So I'm just doing small, brush strokes like this all the way around. See how I'm just dabbing back and forth. And I'm actually not using a ton of water because I want my colors to be a little bit brighter. Just be careful as you're painting around your petals that you don't accidentally get a little blue in there. If you do though, no big deal, right? Because the blue will mix with the yellow and you'll get some greens. All right, now I'm going to use a lighter shade of blue. I'm just gonna start to fill in some of those white spots that I had. Carefully go around doing little brush strokes. And you can start to see how the colors are gonna blend in with each other to make different shades of color. And you can leave some spots white and go back in later and add some purple, which is what I think I am going to do. For right now, I'm gonna use my lighter shade of blue. And remember, you can make a lighter shade of blue by just using a little bit more water. You could even overlap with some greens. Let's try that and see what happens. Ooh, it makes kind of a turquoisey color. I like that. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more of that. So just like Van Gogh, we're creating all different colors so that whoever is looking at your painting has so much to look at and explore. Oh, I'm glad we tested out that green. I love what's happening here. Do some more blue. Almost finished. So I'm working 
fairly fast. You guys certainly do not have to work this fast. You can pause the video or you could watch the whole video and then go in and do your own thing, but you don't have to keep up with me because I want you to do what works best for you. All right, I'm gonna use a little purple. Let's see what happens. Ooh, look at that purple. Look at all these colors happening right here. Just a little corner left over here. All right, let's take a closer look at this finished piece. All right, so here is my finished sunflower. And if you zoom in a little bit, you can see that I've used lots of different blues and purples and greens and overlap them to create these beautiful colors. And the same thing in the petals. So let's see what you can come up with. Let's check in with Mimi. Oh, beautiful sunflower. I like how you use the colors to go from light to dark. Very lovely. All right, everybody, another fabulous day of creating together. I had a lot of fun with this project. I really love being able to explore with color and different painting techniques, which is just what you did today. So awesome job. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be taking a look at the work of Pablo Picasso, who is an abstract artist. So if you have a chance tonight, maybe take a look at some of the work he has created. All right, everybody, another fabulous day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.